You got all that straight? Yes. And leave right away. Where's the envelope, May? Here. Why'd you want it? Because I don't know what's going to happen to me now. I've got some bonds here and my will. It ain't much, but I want to take care of you. By now, the cops must have orders to shoot to kill. Oh. Here, this won't take a minute. Just a few signatures. But how are you going to get out of it, George? I'll find this guy, Franz Carely. But can't you explain to the cops? Do you think they'll buy a story like mine? Well, I don't know. Here, take these bonds and keep them in a safe place. They're as good as cash now. But how are you going to find Carely? I don't know. But you can find a man if you want to. What's that? Well, clipping just fell out of your envelope. A clipping? Yeah, from the newspaper. George, when did you have that breakdown? In the spring of 1940, the year before I married you. Why? You never did tell me much about that. Well, there wasn't much to tell. Why are you asking me about it now? Because this clipping is dated 1940, May 7th. So what? What's the name of this guy you picked up at the cemetery? Franz Kirley. Oh. What's the matter? Listen to this. Services were held for the late Franz Kirley, who was buried in Wolfsbane Cemetery this morning. The deceased was killed in an automobile accident two days ago. Let me see that clipping. Here. Wolfsbane. Yeah, now I know I was always so scared of that place. What, What are you talking about? It's funny, the tricks your mind can play. Do you know why I clipped this out of the newspaper? No. It happened just before my breakdown. I hit a guy's car. The car broke into flames. The guy was killed. I was so scared by the whole thing, I I never told the cops. That's why I had the breakdown. But what about the guy? Franz Curley. It's the same name. Could it be the same guy? Sure. Could be the same guy who came out of his grave. The clipping gave me one tip. It had the name of Franz Kirillis' brother. It wasn't easy, but by the next night I found out where the guy lived. I wasn't taking any chances now. I had a gun. When I got to the house, I heard a kind of queer music. Somebody was playing the piano. I tried the door. It was open. Who is that? Who came in? Don't get up from the piano. Oh, a gun. You were alone? Yes. Your name is Istvan Kirilli? Yes. You have a brother named Franz? Franz? Yes. Where is he? Franz died ten years ago in an auto accident. He didn't die. I want to know where he is. I don't know what you're talking about or what you are after. I am a sick man with a bad heart. You can go through this house, take anything you want. I don't care. I didn't come here to rob you. I just want to know where your brother is. I told you he died. He couldn't have died. Who are you? Take a look at this evening newspaper. Police search for homicidal truck driver who killed Eleonora Imre. Your brother killed that woman. That's why I've got to find him. Franz killed Eleonora? You know who she is? She was the girl he was going to marry. What else do you know about her? She was not true to him. Franz found out. Go on. He was going to kill her on the night he was burned to death. I talked to him. I tried to stop him. But he went out. And now, ten years later, she's murdered. What kind of a story are you handing me? It's the truth. Why should I lie to you? I wouldn't know. Have you heard anything from your brother? How could I hear from him? He's dead. You have a picture of him? There, on the piano. Yeah, that's him. Wait a minute. There's something in this picture. Your brother had a finger missing on his right hand. Yes, it happened a long time ago in Hungary. 
He cut his finger on his side. Allison, was it really your brother who was buried in Wolf Lane Cemetery? Yes. He was burned to death. Who identified the body? I did. You sure you didn't make a mistake? I'm quite certain. No, leave me alone. I'm sick. Okay. You can go back to your piano. The stores hadn't closed yet, so I bought a pick and a shovel, threw them in a car I rented, and drove out to the cemetery. It took a little time to find the grave. There was a half moon in a cloudy sky, and I began to dig. It was hard work and tough going, but soon I hit wood. I grabbed a pick and crashed it through the rotten wood. If I could show that this wasn't Franz Killerly, if there was no finger missing, I could go to the police and prove that this guy who was supposed to have been dead for ten years was still alive. I struck a match and looked. One of the fingers was missing. The third one of the right hand. The same one that was missing in the picture. And then I heard it. The limping footsteps of the man who had been dead for ten years. For a moment, my heart seemed to fill my chest, beating there like a big bass drum. And suddenly I knew what to do. I yanked the gun out of my pocket, swung around. I saw him there, outlined in the yellow moonlight. I fired. You understand? Don't even try to move. My chest. You've been wounded. It ain't too bad. Where are you taking me? To a hospital. I won't make it. You'll make it. You've got to. I must prove you killed that dame. Was it an accident that I picked you up in the cemetery last night? No. No, it wasn't an accident. I knew you drove a truck past the cemetery three times a week. Why'd you frame me? Because you had had a breakdown. You were the right person to frame. Because I wanted to get even. Get even for what? That accident ten years ago. Then then you weren't killed. No. What about the body in the grave? His name was Lane. Richard Lane. He was in the car with me ten years ago. He'd gone too far with Eleonora. I was taking him out to the cemetery for a showdown when your truck sideswiped us. Was he killed? No. He was pinned behind the wheel, unconscious. I was thrown clear of the car. I saw my opportunity. I left certain things that could identify me. What about the finger? I took care of that while he was out cold. Then you set fire to the car. Yes. Why? I was in trouble with the police. They wouldn't look for a man who was dead. I knew it would all make sense. And you came back ten years later to kill this dame who cheated on you. But why'd you drag me in? Why'd you pick on me? You noticed my leg? Yeah. You did that to me in the accident ten years ago. You were getting even? I always settle up my debts. So it all adds up. You came to the cemetery to kill me because I knew you that you were alive. Huh. Well, your frame-up won't stick. Won't it? All I have to do is take you to the cops. I'll make you tell them what you told me. I'll be dead when we get there. Huh? Do you think I'd tell you all this? If I didn't know I was going to die. All right, even then, I'll still be able to prove it. Oh. With your brother. You saw him tonight. He knows you didn't die ten years ago. This one won't say a word. He's dead. Dead? A heart attack. I should have warned him I was coming. I hadn't spoken to him for ten years. I didn't know about his heart. <sighs> you can't, son. You've got to live. Eleanor. You've got to prove to them that I'm not insane, that I know what I'm talking about. I, I wish I could move. <gasps> Eleanor. <sighs> I realized the spot I was in. They had me tabbed as a homicidal maniac. It would look great if they found him in the car. It would sound great if I tried to tell them the truth. So I stopped the car and I dumped him out and hid the body behind some bushes. 
I kept on driving for four days. I hired a room in this house where I'm writing this. So you'll know what happened, May. For a week, I've done nothing but sleep. But last night, I was awakened by the sound of footsteps in the room above mine. I recognized them. They were his. Somehow, he's come back again. Well, Lieutenant, did you read the letter I received from my husband? Yes, Mrs. Gidden, and uh, I don't know what to make of it exactly. Why? What do you mean? Well, this morning we received word that your husband is dead. He died just as he predicted in an automobile accident. And as for Franz Carley, as far as we know, he died ten years ago. And we can find no evidence that he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> I guess George finally ran out of gas. Guess there's nothing wrong with him that couldn't have been cured by doing a valve job on his brain. George was the kind of guy who cut off his nose despite his face. He should have cut off his whole head and had no further trouble. <laughs> Which brings us to the moral of our story, taken from the Roman philosopher Corpus Delicatessen, who wrote, The one thing in the world that's easiest to get into and hardest to get out of is not marriage. Mm -mm. It's a (laughs) grave. Say, did you ever want to take your thumb and punch in the bottom of a chocolate-covered candy just to see what's inside? Of course you have. Some you like, some you don't. So it's just natural to want to know what's inside. So let me tell you what's inside the Mars Coconut Bar. Smooth, pure, dark chocolate. Delicious dark chocolate spread on thick. And inside of that, the finest Philippine coconut. The very best. And when you bite into that delicious coconut, freshly shredded, juicy, rich... You'll say, now that's coconut the way I like it. Yes, take pure dark chocolate. Take the finest coconut. And take Mars candy-making magic. And that's the Mars Coconut Bar. The candy bar for you to take to really satisfy your deep-down crave for coconut. And now, once again, our host. Tonight's story was written by Milton Lewis and starred Ralph Bell in the role of George. Peter Capel played Franz. Music was by Lou White. This month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel is Until You Are Dead by Henry Kane. The entire production of Inner Sanctum is under the direction of Hyman Brown. Well, friends, it's time again to close that creaking door until next week at this same time when we'll be back contracting for an eerie earful called The Death Proposal. It's all about a young wife who wants to age her husband in the woods. Pine woods, that is. This is a tale where feelings run deep. About six feet. Oh, you'll be sure to listen in next week when we uh, dig up the plot. Mm. Until then. Good night. Pleasant this is Alan C. Anthony reminding you that it's the Mars Coconut Bar that really answers America's crave for coconut. And that it's the Mars Coconut Bar that brings you Inner Sanctum. And we're going to listen tomorrow night over most of these stations at 8 p.m. Eastern Time to Can You Top This? Brought to you by Snickers, another fine candy bar by Mars where they believe that faithful quality makes faithful friends. 
This program came to you from New York. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.